Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to No, It's All About Winning. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm about to say something that's going to sound like music to some people's ears, and for others, it will sound like nails on chalkboard. The most important thing in the game of basketball is winning. Yep. It's not the only aspect, but the most crucial aspect that we measure greatness and excellence is winning. Yep. It always has been, and it always will be. Yep. With that being said, some people directly or indirectly dispute this claim as some will argue that winning is not the most important thing. At this point, some of you are probably wondering what inspired this video. Well, it was mostly this statement from former NBA head coach Stan Van Gundy, who was echoing the thoughts of many people in modern basketball circles. Yep. This is what he had to say recently when being interviewed on the Players' Tribune. If you want to tell me that Michael Jordan was a better basketball player than LeBron James, that's fine. You can make a case for that. What you can't make a case for is that MJ had a better career than LeBron. You can't make a case for that. When I saw this tweet, I responded by saying that it genuinely disgusted me. And then a few people completely missed my point and responded by saying that by my logic, Bill Russell is the GOAT. <sighs> Let's let's school. Let's school. Let's school. Let's school these kids. Championships than any other I love this. In the history of the game. Sure, you can try to devalue that accomplishment by saying that he played in an era where there wasn't free agency, or that he played in an era where the general basketball player wasn't as talented. But those are all subjective arguments. And what is absolute truth is that he won more championships than any other player ever. Based on that alone, he will always have a case for being the greatest player. You will never hear me say that Bill Russell doesn't have a case. I don't have a problem with anyone who thinks that LeBron is the greatest ever. I even made a case for LeBron on my own channel. I honestly don't have a problem with anyone who thinks LeBron had the better career. But what I do have a problem with is somebody saying that Jordan doesn't have a case for a better career. A freaking case. Six that, rings, yeah, that's six wild. finals MVPs, which are both more than the other guy. Boom, there's your case. If that's not an accomplishment worthy of making a case for the better career, then what the hell is your measure of excellence? Are we about to say that Alex English had the better career than Larry Bird because he scored more points in the 80s? Are we about to say that John Stockton had a better career than Magic because he ended up with more assists? Whether you're a Jordan fan, a LeBron fan, or just a general basketball fan, what I really hope you understand is that the heart of my argument isn't really about the tired debate of Jordan versus LeBron. It's the fact that Van Gundy completely disregards the career that won more. It's diminishing the value of winning in general, yeah. when winning is literally the most important aspect in basically every area of life. Yes. Seriously, think about it. In sports, it's the winners who are remembered. In your professional life, if you go in for a job interview and you don't get the job, then it doesn't matter how good your interview looked. Yeah. If you don't win that job, then you're not feeding your family. Yep. From a spiritual perspective, winning is pivotal. I'll ask my fellow Christians in the chat, what is the point if Christ doesn't conquer death and achieve victory over sin? A pivotal cornerstone aspect of the Bible is that God wins. Mm. For those who don't share that same faith and abide by another religion, I ask you, what is the point if your God doesn't ultimately win? Same goes for politics, world leaders, and wars. He and preaching, he cooked, and let him cook. The winners who shaped and wrote history while influencing the future. Whether or not you think winning is the most important thing, as time goes on, reality keeps reminding us that winning is in fact the most important thing. Yes. Yet when it comes to basketball, some of us try to belittle its value, which to me often comes across as some kind of coping mechanism for those who haven't won as much as they would have liked. 
You never hear a player who won a bunch of rings diminish the value of his accomplishments, but rather it's always the players or coaches who didn't win as much. Again, there is a lot of nuance to the game of basketball, and that is what makes us hardcore basketball fans. We love talking about the nuance while dissecting the game as much as possible. For example, I don't think Kevin Durant's two rings carry the same weight as the rings of other greats. That's because of the nuance of a superstar player joining a 73-9 team who had just beaten him. I do believe that you have to factor in how the players reach the mountaintop. It's because of nuance like this that I don't have a problem with people believing LeBron is the GOAT, that Kareem is the GOAT, or that Russell is the GOAT. Whoever your guy is, you can make your case. But to say that a player who won more as the clear top dog on his team doesn't have a case is completely asinine and diminishes the value of winning, which is the ultimate measure of success. Don't just take it from me, take it from Kobe Bryant, who thoroughly explained his perspective. Um, hopefully my Laker legacy will be that of a champion. I mean, that's, that's why we play. That is the most important thing. It's number one. It's not about how much you like the person. It's not about how many points that person scored. It's not about how many assists that person had. It's how many championships did they bring to the city of Los Angeles. That is the most important thing. Yes. Truthfully, you know, it's, it's really about winning. It's not about being coddled. It's not about being catered to. You have a responsibility to the city of Los Angeles to bring championship banners back where they belong. That is your responsibility. You have to understand that nothing else matters. Second place does not matter. Second place means you're the first loser, right? So you have to start there. You have to understand that that's what this is. And you may not like it. You may think it sucks. You may think it's not great sportsmanship. Get over it. It is what it is. Now, if you want to diminish Kobe's thoughts on this matter, ask yourself this. Would Kobe's opinion even matter to us if he hadn't done so much winning? Would I even be playing this clip of Kobe if he didn't have the championships? Of course not. It's kind of insane that I even feel like I have to make this video, because this all seems so obvious. But this is where we're at today in this basketball culture, where seemingly everyone is trying to find angles to debate on behalf of their favorite player. Some very quintessential truths of reality are being denied because of people's emotional investment. Winning is pivotal to any standard of excellence, yep. and it always will be. As you can tell from my thoughts, I am a member of the quote ring culture. Not in every case, but in many cases, I look at rings when determining who was better, and I believe most people should. There's a reason why guys like Dirk Nowitzki and Akeem Olajuwon have championship rings, and guys like James Harden and Joel Embiid don't. It's because these guys performed their best when everything mattered the most, while these guys are not cut from the same cloth. Now this video isn't meant to be discouraging to anyone, but my intent is simply for us to stop pretending as if less winning is the more successful outcome. At the end of the day, some of you may see this video as a giant overreaction to one person's statement, but I think it's bigger than that. We as a people need to stop making excuses for our shortcomings, and because facing our failures is hard, we try to somehow redefine them as successes, when winning is the only true success. I don't care what a coping superstar says. When you fall short of your goal, that is a failure. But that doesn't mean you simply hang your head in shame and sulk in your sorrows. You simply focus in, put your head down, and say, come hell or high water, I'm winning next time. And then, if you fail again, you put your head down and say, come hell or high water, I'm winning next time. And even if you fail again, you put your head down and say, come hell or high water, I'm winning next time. I hope all of you watching this video end up doing a lot of winning in life. But inevitably, when you spend some time losing, don't try to make peace with yourself by believing that you're somehow losing successfully. But instead, be like these guys who were determined to follow it up with a win at all cost. Rather than making excuses for our losing, let's be thinking like winners even when we're losing. So what do you guys think? Is the basketball community not putting enough value in championships? Or do you think it's actually the opposite? 
I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, man, it, it, it's all about winning at the end of the day. This is what you play the game for. You play this game to win a championship. You don't play this game for the stats. Y'all can bring up LeBron having the, the most points in NBA history. It don't matter. Jordan is Jordan has a perfect record in the finals. He wins. Kobe has a better record than LeBron in the finals. He wins. It's all about winning. If you're not winning, yo, yo, yo. If you're not winning, you can't be measured up with the best. It's just that simple. Anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one. I'll see y'all in the next video. Till then, peace out.